start recording this. Uh, okay. Um, so this is uh, the expedition by me, Scotty Degenhart. Uh, this is my personal expedition uh, to try and map out uh, the asteroid uh, uh, Antiope, I think is how it's correctly pronounced. Um, let's see here. Uh, this broadcast is being done through this laptop. Uh, I have a Verizon USB uh, wireless mobile broadband that's doing the transmitting. Um, I have a USB video frame grabber that is supporting this camera that I'm holding. I also do have the uh, camera I can use on the laptop uh, if this fails. Um, and how I'm finding my sites is via this GPS where I have programmed all of my uh, sites that uh, I will be hopefully deploying. But as you can see, this is what my sky looks like. So uh, things are not off to a good start at the northern part. Um, I'm sitting right now at 115 kilometers north. Um, I was supposed to start at 175 kilometers north of center but there's no way. You see the solid cloud bank right here. Uh, uh, it's supposed to even be raining and thunderstorming up there, so I abandoned those sites and shifted them all south. Um, you can kind of see off in the distance there, low to the horizon, the clearing line. There is actually a clearing line uh, down there, and I expect about the time I get to about plus 90 kilometers, I'll have a break in the clouds. Uh, here is my countdown clock. Uh, the countdown clock is going to be a, an integral key part to tell me uh, the shift in the path because the fact that there are two asteroids, there's two rocks circling each other, the, the southern asteroid is leading the northern uh, asteroid. So what that means is, is that if the occultation occurs about four, if I get an occultation about 40 seconds before uh, center time, that would mean that the path shifted to the north. If I get an occultation after center time, up to a minute after center time, then that will tell me that the occultation uh, is either right uh, on uh, its path or uh, possibly shifted uh, uh, south a little bit. Uh, so that's uh, the, what my countdown clock is going to tell me this time around. Uh, other key things is going to be music. You're going to have to be forced to listen to my uh, style of music. And then I'm going to go in the back here and then show you my equipment. Uh, let's see. Get in. Battery. Right here. Oh, yes, and then I have to actually switch. Oh, yes. Nah. getting there and this is all you get to see all of how this goes both good and bad all right let me get the microphone switched over mic to 
this. Okay, apparently that mic wasn't working. Can you hear me now, Terry? Can somebody type in and tell me if they hear me? Testing, one, two. It's okay. All right. Uh, okay, good. All right. Now I'm going to uh, show you what I got in the back. Now, where can I? There's the key. Okay, so what we have here, shoot, I gotta turn the computer around so I can see what I'm even pointing at to you all. here is, uh, this is what I call having my ducks in a row. <clears throat> right now I have 16 uh, Mighty Mini Scopes all mounted uh, to their tripods, all laying in a row so that each time I pull up to a station you can reach in and snatch uh, one of the Mighty Minis. Uh, in this suitcase over here, uh, case contains a bag that has a battery pack, it has a uh, Canon ZR recorder that's already been time stamped, and it has a programmable remote control set to activate the record at 1022 universal time and stop the record at 1022 universal time. I mean, 10. 1028 universal time. The uh, yoga mats are for kneeling on while I'm deploying. Uh, they are uh, priceless as far as saving clothing and uh, <coughs> and knees for kneeling down to free point. Um, so the equipment is all laid out, all ready to just grab in an instant. What I do is, is uh, when I get to a site, I'll, I'll take and. Put, put a, a mini on a mat, pull out a recording on the electronic, put it on a mat, I'll take the mat, hard to do one handed, and I pick it up, and I'll uh, and demonstrate what it looks like all set up. Let me get the camera out of my hand so I can do this pretty handy. Now. like a battery in it. Hang on, I'll show you this. Grab a monitor. What is it hooked on? How could it possibly?
Looks like set up. Um, they used the monitor to uh, sign in three point star by using the chart. And then the chart has a time mark on it to tell you what part of the time is going to be. And it's in a time on the left. Two times back, and it's the other quarter. Make sure that the remote control activates the recorder. And so, once I pre point it to the right star, once I pre point it to the right star, uh, I turn off the monitor, put it in the bag, take it and take it and put it on, take it and put it on the yoga mat. Uh, I turn on the remote, I mean, not the remote, so I turn on the Canon VR, I put it back in the bag, slide it under the telescope, well, actually not under it, because I want to bump a leg, I've done that before, and uh, run off to the next. Uh, hopefully, if time allows, I'll uh, be able to show you uh, at the last station, you'll be able to, to watch me actually set one up all the way, so that's... That's all the equipment all spread out. And then this is the front seat with the laptop doing the transmitting and the GPS telling me where to go. So uh, that is now well, that part is going. And you get to watch me drive. As you can see, I have clouds to contend with, and uh, so I have learned in, from previous mistakes of waiting for it to clear up to not wait, and uh, I'm going to give each uh, station 10 minutes to see if it looks like there's any possibility of clearing. If the station has no hope of clearing, I'm moving on to the next station. Um, Sorry about the mic thing. I couldn't get the mic to work. I don't know why. Uh, so, anyway, uh, now I'm going to stop recording the.